answer yet, huh? Try him again. Afraid it's no use, Mr. Powers. We haven't heard a peep from him since he reported his motor cut. I said try him again. Yes, sir. Metropolitan Airport to Andrews in 601. Metro calling Andrews in 601. Go ahead. That's no use, sir. We can't get a word. Get Summers in 630. Find out if he's seen anything yet. Yes, sir. Maisie. Yes, sir. Get A, your hanger. Find out who serviced Andrew's ship before it left and uh, send them into my office. You get Summers? I'm trying now. Metropolitan to Summers in 630. Metro to Summers in 630. Go ahead. Summers to Metro. Summers to Metro. Go ahead. I got him, Mr. Powers. Good. Ask him if he's seen anything of Andrews. Metro to Summers. Chief wants to know, have you sighted Andy yet? Go ahead. Summers to Metro. Visibility up here, very bad. Flying 3,500 feet. Raining. Very dark. Nothing yet. Get his location. Metro... Metro, what is your position? Go ahead. Two minutes south, Queen Peak. Country very rough. Don't dare get much lower. And see Peak and on Sentinel Hill from here. That's all. Mm, Twin Peaks and Sentinel, huh? All right, tell him to come on in. You get that mechanic, Maisie? Yes, sir. He's on his way, Mr. Powers. Get the directors of this airline down to my office right away. Get them out of bed if you have to, but get them down. Send that mechanic to my office when he comes. Yes, sir. Metropolitan to Summers. Chief says, come on in. Don't take any chances. Here's the weather. Visibility about half mile. Ceiling 200 feet. Surface wind 30 miles. Mr. Powers. Uh, show him in and uh, get his service record out of the file. I want to see it. Yes, sir. Uh, this way, please. You're the uh, night mechanic in a hangar? Yes, sir. What's your name? It's Gerald, sir. Mm. New man, huh? Yes, sir. Who hired you? Roby, sir. Field operations manager, huh? How long have you been with Trans American? About three weeks, sir. Did you service Andrew's ship tonight before he started out? Yes, sir. How? Well, I gave it the usual inspection, sir, just like always. Did you uh, check the mags? Yes, sir. Why? What's happened? I'll tell you what's happened. Andrews was bucking this storm over Twin Peaks when his motor cut on him. It's the last we've heard. Motor cut? That's what I said. He radioed that much to us, and that's all we've had from him. Gee. I guess you know that makes the third ship we've lost in three weeks. Yes, sir. And uh, they're all out of a hangar. I guess you know that, too, don't you? Yes, sir. You're the man that's responsible for those ships, Fitzgerald. Three ships. $80,000 worth of airplanes in three weeks. All three on your shift, out of your hangar. What's your explanation? Well, I don't know what to say, sir. I gave them all the standard inspection. Mags, switches, lines, tanks. Everything was all right, sir. They turned up when they left here. Isn't that all? Yes, sir. All right. You're fired. What, sir? I said you're fired. But Mr. Powers, uh, don't you think that's just a bit hard? Why is it? I'll show this entire organization that I don't intend to put up with inefficiency around here. Lord knows the aviation industry is having a hard enough time as it is. Trans-American is going ahead, and we can't do it by losing planes. That's all. But, sir, how do you figure it was my fault? I don't want to argue this matter with you, Fitzgerald. We've lost three ships out of your hangar in three weeks. The pilots all said the motor cut out on them. You were paid to see that the motors performed. I did my best, sir. Your best wasn't enough. That's final. Yes, sir. Tell Maisie to come in as you go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Anything from Andrews yet? Hmm. Now get Roby out of bed. Tell him to call out all the men on the night shift. Give them cars. Tell them to scour the country this side of Twin Peaks. Andrews probably bailed out. You wanted me, Mr. Powers? How'd you figure that out? Did you get those uh, directors on the phone? Yes, sir. All except Mr. Kirby. His phone didn't answer. They said they'd be right over. Good. Summers is up looking for 601. I had him call in. The minute he's down, send him into my office. Yes, sir. That's all. Yes, sir. Uh, there's a young lady outside to see you. She's been waiting. A lady? What she want? Uh, she wouldn't say, Mr. Powers. Her name is Delroy. Delroy, huh? Well, send her in. This way, please, Mr. Powers. Yes. I'm Irene Delroy. Well, what about it? What do you want? I want to talk to you, Mr. Powers. Sorry, Miss Delroy. I'm very busy. Call for an appointment tomorrow. I'm sorry to inconvenience you, but I want to talk to you tonight. It's business. It's 10.45. I have an important meeting. You'll have to wait. Sorry, Mr. Powers. I'm sure your board of directors won't mind waiting a few minutes when they find you're dealing with the government. The government? Yes, Mr. Powers. I'm from the Department of Justice. Trans-American lost its third ship tonight. How do you know that? The tales are out of place at this time. I want to know where this ship was last reported. Well, uh, just why should you or the Department of Justice be interested in our ships? The Department is not interested in your ships, Mr. Powers, unless your ships carry government mail. Hmm. I see. Well, uh, you have nothing to worry about. They'll find the mail in the wreckage. I don't doubt that. But I rather doubt if you'll find the $30,000 in government securities which was included in the shipment. What? Your ship carried $30,000 in negotiable securities tonight. You mean to say that... I have said nothing other than that. Eight days ago, a similar shipment was carried. Your ship crashed, the mail was recovered, but the shipment was missing. Why was no report made to me at that time? That has no bearing on this case. Twenty-one days ago, you lost another plane. Included in the mail shipment was $5,000 in currency for an upstate bank. It was not in the mail when the wreckage was found. You mean that our ships are being deliberately wrecked? You may draw your own conclusions, Mr. Power. No, that's, uh, that's number 630 coming in. Send him to look for Andrew. I, uh, I hardly know what to make of your story, Miss Delroy. I rather expected it would surprise you. The other gentlemen are here, Mr. Powers. Oh, send them in. My directors, Miss Delroy, you'll remain? Yes. Good. I want them to hear your story. <laughs> Good evening, Campbell. Mr. Hardy, Lewis, come in, gentlemen. What's the meaning of this, Powers? What's up? What's so all fired important that you have to get us out on a night like this? Don't start spouting about the weather. I've had my hands full tonight. Gentlemen... Trans American has lost another ship. What? what? I, I, I thought that would bring you around. Now find chairs and sit down. What ship? One of the new fast mails, our latest low wing job. Why, we just took delivery on that ship last month. Why, we stand to lose $30,000. Why, my. Not only that, gentlemen. We stand to lose our mail contract with the government. Why, then we can draw the business. Our contract, Powers, I demand an explanation. Now, well, don't burst a blood vessel. You'll get it. You'll get all you want. I want you to meet Miss Delroy from the Department of Justice. It seems that they want an explanation, too. Miss Delroy, these are the directors of the Trans-American Airlines. Tell them what you told me. There's little to tell us yet, gentlemen. The department has reason to believe that your ships are being deliberately and very cleverly wrecked by a ring of mail thieves. Why, that's <laughs> not impossible. On what does your department base its uh, contention? On the fact that all three of the ships which your company has lost in the last three weeks carried government securities which were easily negotiable. And on the fact that all ships were lost within a radius of one mile of each other. Where did we lose the fast mail tonight, Powers? Somewhere between Twin Peaks and Signal Hill, according to Andrew's radio report. You remember, gentlemen, that the other ships were lost at the same point. Miss Delroy is right. What did Andrew's report? Didn't have time to report much. Said his motor cut on him, that's all. He was in bad country. I suppose he bailed out. We haven't found him yet. Say, Andrew's was piloting those other ships when they cracked, wasn't he? That's precisely why I called this meeting tonight, gentlemen. 
Andrews is our oldest pilot, possibly our best. I'm going to let him and every man connected with the dispatching of the eastbound planes go. I honestly believe the only way we can wipe out this thing is to clean house. I hardly believe that will solve your troubles, Mr. Powers. What do you mean? Whoever is responsible for your troubles will not let trivial things stand in his way. If you want to see your ships carried through on schedule, you must cooperate with us to apprehend the criminal. Hmm. Well, how do you propose to go about it? Well, I've made no decision along those lines as yet. I merely want you to assist in placing all information that we may need before us. Well, certainly. You'll find that we're... Uh, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Powers. Well? We just got a call from the State Highway Patrol over near Kingman that they just picked Andrews up on the highway. He's okay, sir. Bailed out. He's okay, huh? Well, tell him to bring him in. I uh, presume we want to hear from him. Right, gentlemen? Right, gentlemen?